groups, it's Eric here. Matt is away on vacation, and I was given the opportunity to do groups questions, which I was pretty happy about. So, uh, yeah, let's just jump right in with the icebreaker. Um, for the icebreaker today, what would change your life more, a, we, a day in heaven or a day in hell? Um, talk about that. I, I think it's a pretty robust conversation after that, but talk about that. And then um, go ahead and pivot into the kids' questions and talk about the challenge from last week. Uh, what, what was your challenge last week and how did that go? Uh, after that, I'll be back after you're done discussing to, to start leading into the other questions. Go ahead and read uh, from the book of Numbers, chapter 22, verses 30, 21 to 31, and then I'll be back with a question for that. So pop the Bible open. Uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, fourth book in the Bible, book of Numbers, full of words, ironic, maybe. And uh, read that, and then I'll be back with some questions. So in this story, Balaam, uh, for question one, in this story, Balaam was unable to see beyond what he could immediately perceive with his own eyes. What are some other stories you can think of where there was more going on than met the eye? And the next part of that question is, what have been some times in your life when you could only sense what was right in front of you, uh, only to realize later that there were things going on behind the scenes? Question number three, think about Balaam for a moment. He knew the story. He knew the truth, not the story, the truth about God, but he didn't follow him. What does that speak into your own personal life? What does that raise a conviction for you? The way that we view God is the foundation for everything in our life, right? It's, it's the foundation. Actually, one of my favorite theologians, A.W. Tozer says, and I'm paraphrasing it, um, but it's out of his book, The Knowledge of the Holy, and he says it this way. He says, the highest and most lofty thought any human can ever have is a correct belief or understanding or thought of God. So, I mean, it's pretty important to know this. So when we, we turn our kind of mind towards it, uh, the way that we view God or think of God is the foundation of everything in our life. The question be, uh, the challenge might be, take some time and share the characteristics of God that have impacted you in 2022, what are some of the characteristics of God, his holiness, his goodness, his love, like those things? What are some of the traits and characteristics of God that have impacted you in 2022? Read Psalm 90 uh, verses um, 14 to 17 and answer this question. What sticks out to you? What sticks out to you when you read 14 to 17 in Psalm 90? What are the things that stick out to you? I hope you're noticing that we're challenging you, challenging you to be in prayer more as a group and your personal life and in your family life. And we would like to challenge this week to take one of the verses from Psalm 90, 14 to 17 and really pray that over your home, over your family and do this each day of the week. So I would like to invite you, take that challenge from us. Pray this over your home, over your family. Find one of those verses that really speaks into your life and pray Pray that over your home and family each day of this week. In digging deeper, if you want to go a little further with this, open your Bibles to the book of Daniel. So if you move from Psalms and you just turn 
So you're turning the right page towards the left and you move through the major prophets, um, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, you'll get to Daniel, that's next. And open to the book of Daniel, chapter 10, verses 12 to 14. When you read that real quick and then uh, answer this question, what did you learn from this passage? What thing did you just maybe learn that you didn't know before? How does this story in Daniel relate to the story of Balaam in Numbers? Jumping further ahead, continuing to, to turn your Bible, you know, flipping pages from right to left, moving towards the book of Ephesians, uh, which is after the Gospels um, and after Acts, I think, yeah, Romans, Corinthians, and then you get into, um, I always remember it this way. Uh, someone once told me it worked when I was little, General Electric Gas Company. So um, how's that work? Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. That's how I always remembered the order of those epistle letters. So there's a little thing. And it's funny, I hadn't thought of that, but as I just was doing, I'm like, that's, that's from like my childhood. So it works pretty good. So Ephesians right in there. Read Ephesians chapter six, verse 12. And then um, I'll come back with a question. Looking back at your life, try to think of a time where you have been engaged in some sort of battle only to later realize that the battle was not against a person um, uh, or uh, you know anything, but it was actually a spiritual battle um, that was taking place not only in the heavens, but right there in your own life. How does this challenge the way or the views that you hold about how we engage in spiritual warfare? Since we know that there's so much more going on than we could ever really imagine or understand, um, see God's perspective on this. See God's perspective. He sees all and knows all. Ask God to give you the ability to see beyond your immediate vision, even as he did to Balaam. Ask him to open your eyes and, and let you see where God's at work or what's opposing you so you can pray into that and trust him more. Friends, thank you for joining us for groups. Thank you for being invested and involved in the Foundry Church. Um, bless you. Enjoy your conversation. I hope you had a great time in groups this week. Grace and peace.